In this video, we'll talk about how to evaluate trig expressions. And I want to begin by drawing the unit circle. So I'm going to draw some axes and then make us a unit circle. Alrighty, so this is our unit circle. So recall that if I use the unit circle to write down what my trig functions equal, I'm going to draw a triangle. So I'm going to make some angle. I'm going to call this angle theta. And then drop a right triangle from this point down to the x-axis. So I'm going to make that right angle. And then this point, its coordinates, I'm going to call x comma y. So x represents this length, the horizontal length. And then the y represents this vertical length. And because it's a unit circle, that means the, the radius has a unit length. In other words, the radius or this hypotenuse has a length of one. So sine of theta, thinking back to Sokotoa, sine was the opposite side, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is one. So sine is y over one, which is just y. Cosine using Sokotoa was adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is one. So x over one, which is x. And then tangent is y over x. These other three trig functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, they're just the reciprocals of the functions directly across from them. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. It's going to be 1 over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it'll be 1 over x. And then cotangent will be the reciprocal of tangent. It'll be x over y. And I'm going to box this whole thing. So we're reviewing what the different trig functions are equal to. And now let's do an example. So remember again that I continue my numbering on examples for all the examples in a particular section. That's why this is example three. All right, so I want to evaluate the expressions. Part A asks for a cosecant of seven pi over four. So I want to begin by drawing our unit circle. And then figure out, well, where is 7 pi over 4 in the unit circle? So I know that over here on the right-hand side, on the positive x-axis, this is where an angle of 0 is. And then 7 pi over 4 is a positive angle. And I start to measure positive angles going this way. So positive angles will go this way. Counterclockwise, if I need to do negative angles, and I'll do that in the next example, those will be measured going clockwise. Alrighty, so I need to find out where 7 pi over 4 is. Well, let's remember that pi over 4 is over here. This is where 45 degrees is. So that means 2 pi over 4 would be up here, 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. So that would be 90 degrees. If I keep going like that, another pi over 4 would put me at 3 pi over 4. And I could just keep going like this. 4 pi over 4 would be here. 5 pi over 4 would be here. 6 pi over 4 would be here, and then 7 pi over 4 is here. So that is the angle that we care about. So I'm going to connect that with the origin and then drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. And I know that this angle is a 45 degree angle, just by symmetry because pi over 4 was also making a 45 degree angle. And that makes this other angle of the triangle also 45. So the hypotenuse, or the radius of the circle, is 1, because it's a unit circle. And now if I remember my unit circle stuff, or if I remember my 45, 45, 90 triangles from geometry, if I know the hypotenuse is 1, to get the other sides, the sides that are opposite the 45 degree angle, I divide the hypotenuse by square root of 2. So this will be 1 over square root of 2, and this will be 1 over square root of 2. One of the things that I like to do is depending on the coordinates of my point x comma y, if either of those coordinates is negative, and the y coordinate here is negative because I'm below the x-axis, I like to put a negative sign in front of it. So I'm going to put a negative sign in front of this negative 1 over 2, just so I know, oh, the y is negative. All right, so cosecant, remember, is 1 over sine. So we're looking for 1 over sine of 
this angle, I'm just going to put a squiggly, squiggly line for that angle. So we need 1 over, and sine is the y-coordinate. So this is 1 over my y-coordinate I know is negative 1 over root 2. And when you divide by this fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And if you do that, you will get negative root 2 as our answer. All right, let's do one more example. Part B says cotangent of negative 11 pi over 3. So let's draw our unit circle to figure out where is this angle in it. So I'll make our circle. And I'll label 0 here. This time we have a negative angle. Negative angles get measured this way. Negative angle. If I were to go one full time around, that would put me at negative 2 pi. And then to compare that to negative 11 pi over 3, I get a common denominator. So negative 2 pi is negative 6 pi over 3, if I make the denominator a 3. So I haven't quite made it far enough if I just go one full time around, because I just end up at negative 6 pi over 3. I need to make it to negative 11 pi over 3. So if I go another pi over 3 in that direction, I would end up here, another 60 degrees, this is where negative 7 pi over 3 is. And if I go another pi over 3, or 60 degrees, I end up here. This is negative 8 pi over 3. And if I go another 60 degrees, we'd end up at negative 9 pi over 3, which simplifies to negative 3 pi. And then another 60 degrees would be here, negative 10 pi over 3. Another 60 degrees would be where we want to be, negative 11 pi over 3 would be here. Let's make our right triangle. This angle is 60 degrees, which means the other angle in this right triangle is 30 degrees. So let's zoom it in a little bit here. The hypotenuse, because it's a unit circle, is 1. And now if I remember my unit circle stuff, or if I remember my 30, 60, 90 triangle information, the side that's opposite the 30 is half of the hypotenuse. So this is going to be 1 half. And then to get the side opposite the 60, it's the 1 half, the opposite 30 side, being multiplied by square root of 3. So this is going to be square root of 3 over 2. I could also have gotten that if I remember by unit circle stuff. Alrighty, so now I know the x and y values. I don't need to put a negative in front of either of them because the x is positive and the y is positive here. So remember that cotangent is x over y. And the x-coordinate is a half. The y-coordinate is root 3 over 2. And then if I'm, when I divide by this fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'll get 1 half being multiplied by 2 over root 3. And then the 2's would cancel, and I'd end up with 1 over root 3. And that is our answer. In terms of our goals now, we've reviewed how we can simplify trig functions.